Guys, welcome back. It's been a while. I'm here. I'm here to stay. We're approaching the halfway mark of 100 creator interviews. This week's guest is writer Jay Ferber. Check it out. Guys, welcome to the show, Jay Ferber. Jay, how are you today? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm pretty good. I pronounced your last name right, right? You did. Awesome. Uh, how, how botched does your last name get? It's, I mean, it's usually Farber or, or Farber. Uh, okay. And, and I'm used to it, but now I just try to get out ahead of it sometimes. It's, uh, it's, it's I, I don't usually interrupt people to correct them. Um, yeah. Because it is pronounced differently than the way it's spelled. That's interesting. My last name is, all, my last name is Stambolian. So for the entirety of my existence, I think I've met maybe three people in my life who pronounce that name right. right. And I married one of them. So. <laughs> Mine uh, is weird because my dad started changing the way he pronounces it. Uh, uh, at some point he decided, because he was in sales. So I think rather than correct people, he started pronouncing it Fairber. Uh, okay. So now like my dad and my half siblings are, my, my younger half siblings are like, why do you pronounce our name differently? I'm like, well, <laughs> ask dad. Because <laughs> his parents pronounce it the way I pronounce it. But it's uh, it's always common. interesting. Yeah, very interesting with family histories and stuff like that. Um, yeah. when, did you, when did you break in to comics? And a two-part question. When did you break into comics and were you a lifelong fan? Uh, I broke in in 1998. And mm-hmm. yes, I, have, I am a lifelong fan. I, I cannot remember a time in my life when I haven't read comics, uh, especially then. I mean, I, I think I read a little less these days, but, but back then in my 20s uh, and, and from a small child all the way up, I was a, a huge comic book nerd. What were some of your favorites growing up? Like what, uh, what got you into it? Like I can specifically remember buying my first comic book at like the grocery store up the block. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the first comic I ever mm-hmm. bought. I don't think so. I, I knew I was aware of superheroes from uh, the Adam West Batman show mm-hmm. and Super Friends and Spider-Man and his amazing friends and the Christopher Reeve movies. Uh, but it was buying uh, an issue. It was New Teen Titans issue 25. Mm-hmm. It was the first issue of Titans that I bought. You know, Marv Wolfman, George Perez. And it blew my mind that yeah. I had known about the Teen Titans from like the 60s short-lived cartoon. And I was just like, oh my God, like the Teen Titans are like cool and grown up. And Robin has this like sexy alien girlfriend. Like this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And so I was big into it from there on. That was my real gateway drug. That's awesome. I always love hearing stories like that. Uh, when I was a kid, my bro- my older brother had like a ridiculous comic book collection that I was never allowed to touch, you know? <laughs> and then like one day, like I went to the store, I was maybe like five and it was uh, just like this issue of Batman with like this Paul Galassi cover oh, where right. he's like in front of like a mine entrance mm-hmm. and he's got like a torch and just like a battering out. And I remember just like, I still have the copy and it's yeah. a completely like, dog-eared <laughs> messed up book at this point and That's like I, yeah and i'll always look at it and be like oh this is fantastic did you get did you ever get into like any of the older stuff like the silver age stuff i mean you know I, i've revisited it a little bit mm-hmm. but it it, I, it I never really uh it, it never really grabbed me that much i was mm-hmm. pretty much like from the 80s onward i, I was into it but i i, yeah. I haven't like I'm obviously familiar and aware of the older stuff, but I, I never really went back as a fan. Uh, I was more interested in what was happening now. That's fascinating. Um, do you think that had a influence on your writing style as opposed to like not being into like those older, older, like, I guess like fundamental books or whatever? I, I think so. Like I've never, I mean, it, it probably had an influence on my writing style. I was very influenced by, again, the Wolfman Perez, you know, soap mm-hmm. opera, that Chris Claremont approach to comics much more so than the sort of Stan Lee, Jack Kirby kind of thing. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It definitely, it was definitely kind of foundational for me uh, from that era. Yeah. It's always, it's also like that kind of like um, those, I don't, I don't want to say peaks and valleys, but that creative like ebb and flow of, you know, comics were this at one point, Right. And then in the 80s, that started to shift where it's like, like you were saying, 
the Titans were cool, you know, yeah. and it was very dramatic. And then in the yeah. 90, it, it's like we're constantly upping the game as far as yeah. comics go. And there's some stuff on the shelves now that's like unbelievable, you know, oh. even like stuff in the big two, which yeah. is is fascinating. Um, I do have a, 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 a little fanboy nerd out. Uh, I love Copperhead. Oh, thank uh, you. It's one of my favorite image books in the last 10 years. Is it ever coming back? I hope so. Okay. <laughs> uh, we, we have one more arc to do that will kind of tie it up. Mm -hmm. and it's really just a matter of working out uh, Scott Godleski's schedule uh, more than anything. Okay. Uh, you know, because he, he's been so crucial to that book that if we set up the last arc that he, we sort of plotted it out together, but I, we decided he would sort of take point. He wanted to kind of write and draw it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm, I'm happy for him to do that. Uh, the problem is he's getting a lot of work at DC right now. Uh, and right. so it's, it's hard to turn to say no to that. Uh, Cause while we all love Copperhead, it's, it's not a huge moneymaker. So it's, it's a labor of love. So it's something that we have to kind of chip away at uh, when we have time. And I wish I could estimate when, you know, it, it'll be ready to come out, but I, I just can't. It, it's I, I, I would, I'm too afraid of being wrong. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, if, I don't know if you've been approached at all, but like for me, that book always in my head, I was always imagine it as like this really well done kind of like Netflix show or like Amazon prime show, or even like as an animated show, have you been approached to, to turn that uh, into that I've or approached? We've had meetings, we've had mm. pitches and stuff. There's nothing I can talk about yet, but it, it is definitely something that, that uh, you're not alone in thinking that put it that way. Awesome. 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 That's cool. That's I always like seeing that. And it's, it's, it's also interesting, like seeing like the, that process of going from the page to the screen. And yeah. sometimes it's, in a heartbeat and other times it's like, Oh, I remember that book from like 15 right. years ago. Really awesome. You know, like, it's cool yeah. that like, but it's awesome also that, you know, comic creators get to delve into that yeah. realm now, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I kind of want to piggy tail on that. And I, I'm going to go a little back and forth here in your sure. career. Um, how did it feel when you landed the writing job on Supergirl? Uh, pretty good. I mean, that, that was, it was, it felt like the perfect fit to me that mm -hmm. it was, you know, I'm a huge comic book fan. I'm a DC fan in particular. I mean, I, I love Marvel as well, but I think yeah. if I, if you put a gun to my head, I'm, I'm more <laughs> of a DC guy at heart. Uh, and you know, the, I, I love the Arrowverse. Those shows are so much fun. Uh, yeah. and so to get that gig was, was a, a real milestone for me. It was a lot of fun. Um, and you did the fifth and sixth season. Yeah, seasons five and six. Yeah, the last. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Uh, were you on set and like all that? Like, was it was it cool to see like everything you wrote kind of come to life? And yeah. Oh yeah. That That's way. always a, a very fun part of it. Uh, I was on set in season five. Season six we did during COVID, so I didn't go up for that. Um, okay. The writers, you know, just we tried to minimize who needed to be on set. Um, mm -hmm. But for season five, I went up uh, three or four times, I think. Um, and the, the real highlight for me was I got to write or co-write with a few other people, the mm -hmm. Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover episode. Uh, so that yeah. was a real thrill to just, you know, get to meet Burt Ward and, and uh, you know, uh, just, just see all these characters from across the DC universe from the various interpretations. And the fact that we were able to get so many of them in that crossover was just like fanboy heaven for me. That was a fun crossover. I think that was my favorite one, like personally, yeah. as a fan. Like I've fallen off with like a few of the CW shows, but like that I thought was like very special. Like a lot of yeah. hard work and and heart got put into it. Did you yeah. gush a little bit meeting Burt Ward? A little bit. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't have a long conversation with him or anything, but I definitely uh, shook his hand and said what a what a big nerd I am for him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he was just, I mean, people were, you know, uh you know, obviously he's there to do a job and, and so am I, but it, yeah. it was nice to be able mm -hmm. to at least tell him how much I appreciated him. And, and, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, he's Robin. Robin was my favorite superhero for a long, long time. 
I think I think culturally now it's more acceptable to say to someone like, hey, I'm a huge nerd for your stuff. You know, <laughs> whereas yeah. like I think maybe 15, 20 years ago is that was like verboten. Like you could right. not like you'd be ejected from wherever you are, you know, like which I always found funny. Like you can't let people know that you're a fan of theirs. And right. I think to a certain extent, you know. Yes. You gotta you gotta be professional, but but people yeah. and people like hearing that generally. It, it I mean there there was a time, I think, where you know, uh, you know, like George Reeves was sort of stigmatized by, you know, mm-hmm. he could never escape being Superman. But I think now, you know, Chris Evans has not been damaged by being Captain America. It, it's much more culturally, like the nerd stuff isn't in the ghetto anymore. Uh, it, yeah. It's something that actors can embrace and chase after. You see these people lobbying to be cast in a Marvel movie these days. Whereas before it was kind of like, oh, I got to do this thing where I got to put on tights and a cape. Uh, it's a lot more acceptable and and sought after i think yeah yeah i agree with that i think you know it's always um not to not to sound negative but i always think like what's the movie that's gonna end this thing you know because (laughs) like the marvel and dc stuff and you know i'll even go so far as like the shows on you know your streaming services that are based on comics like it's dominating everything yeah. you know like it's hardcore dominating media streaming movies and i'm like i mean like I, as a fan i'm giddy because i'm like right. you know what when i was a kid we got garbage you know it was yeah. like the rubber eared captain america movie that the tv the tv hulk stuff which i mean i love sure. but you know but like you this- had to make do with what you got Right. So now I'm kind of like, oh, I wish this never ends and I hope it doesn't. But right. what what's it going to be? You know, <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know that it, it the bubble may burst to yeah. a degree, but I don't think it's ever going to go away completely. Just like like Westerns were so prevalent for a long time in, mm-hmm. in TV and movies and then they died off. But you still had Westerns occasionally. It, 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 they just weren't as dominant as they are now. So that could be a thing where they're they're just. You know, you're not seeing seven or eight Marvel movies every year. Yeah, uh, you're just getting them less frequently. So, are you? Do you draw any inspiration from cinema at all? Uh yeah. I mean, I'm. I'm. I think I think very cinematically, uh, mm-hmm. just in terms of like I think of, of I think in pictures generally. Uh, so yeah, whether it's movies or TV or comics, I, I always think visually and draw from that kind of cinematic approach to storytelling does that also translate into your writing process which i'm very curious about i think i read a little blurb saying that you use final draft i use final draft for my film and tv stuff right Uh, for books i these days i write in uh uh just the pages program okay um but for for tv generally Mm -hmm. i write final draft I just did an episode of an animated series where I wrote in uh, Fade In, a different software. Uh, mm-hmm. It's sort of a final draft competitor. But but yeah, I mean, you generally, the the show you're on will generally dictate what software they want you to use. And it's okay. every show I've been on, it's been final draft until this animated series. Yeah, that's, I think final draft has become kind of like the industry standard. I remember like 20 years ago, it was a movie magic screenwriter. Mm-hmm. You know, or so I, I think I think that yeah, was that, it. You know? Still, I know some people who use that, uh, yeah. but but Final Draft is definitely the go-to. Yeah, it also Final Draft makes it very easy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, especially like uh, it, it's funny because that program I always recommend for folks to get it, but on their iPads, oh, um, yeah. which blows my mind because on the ipad the ipad version is uh i think like 17 dollars. okay yeah. and the pc version is like 200 dollars. so i'm right. like and it's the same <laughs> it's this it's almost the same exact thing you know yeah. it's kind of funny um yeah i have a our, friend a tv writer friend who has just started using it almost mm-hmm. exclusively on her ipad uh i think because her husband is using her laptop or something but, but yeah she she loves it I've used it a little bit, but I generally still work on my iPad or my laptop. Rather. Yeah. Uh, what are you currently working on? Uh, I am working on, I have a, I'm pitching an animated series uh, based on one of my comics. Uh, and then I am writing a new graphic novel that I'm, we're just setting up with a publisher right now. Uh, so we're going back and forth on the paperwork aspect of it. Uh, mm-hmm. And what else? And I'm waiting on notes on this animated uh, episode that I wrote. Uh, 
and I have another comic in development with another publisher and another pilot that I'm just starting to kind of brainstorm. Uh, so a lot of balls in the air, but nothing I can really get specific about. Sure, no, 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 that's that's totally fine. I, I run across that every interview I've done. It's always been that little like, you know, I can't really talk about it, but yep. that's still part of the fun. Yes. Because when that thing comes out, I can retweet this interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I'm assuming you have a good relationship with the big two and indie publishers. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't know that I have a... Well, go ahead, finish your question. No, no, please, like, go ahead. I mean, I don't know that I have a good relationship with Marvel and DC. I haven't really okay. done any comic work for them in a long time. Uh, so I'm sort of off their radar, but I'm not really chasing that work to begin with. Um, uh, but I don't think I've burned any bridges there, put it that mm -hmm. way. Could I ask you, you said something interesting where, you know, like you said, you're not chasing work for the big two. Mm -hmm. And I've heard a lot of creators say that, like, what's your reasoning behind that? Uh, it. I live in Southern California, which is a very mm -hmm. high cost of living. Uh, and <laughs> I work in television and Marvel in DC. You know, if I'm going to do comics, I want a lot of creative freedom. And, mm -hmm. and if possible, I want to own what I'm creating. And at Marvel in DC, you don't, you don't own the work. It's work for hire. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it would have to be, I would chase a book that uh, was a character I loved, um, mm -hmm. maybe. But even then, like there's, there's so much editorial stuff at, at the big two. And necessarily so. They're in, interconnected universes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I guess I would, I don't chase it because there's not enough creative freedom for me. As yeah. much as I love some of those characters, uh, I don't know that they would want the, the version that I would want to write. Uh, mm -hmm. so it's, I, I, I'm more fulfilled writing my own stuff. I had a lot of fun when I had my runs on Marvel and DC books back in the day. Uh, and there's stuff that I would love to do over and get a second crack at. Uh, but I, I find myself most fulfilled when I'm writing my own things. A little more breathing room for you. Yeah. And, and it's just more creatively fulfilling, I guess. Yeah. A little more control too. You know, you don't have to really answer to like your higher ups. I assume right. if you have a good editor, that's probably yes. the only real person you have to answer to. Um, in, in terms of creator own stuff, you mean? Yeah. Or yeah. In terms of creator yeah. own stuff, yeah. you know, like I, I feel like there's a lot of stuff out there that like, not to say like some certain things on the shelves are too creator owned, but I always feel like a good editor really like yes. makes a great comic, you know, sure. especially with, with like a lot of the creator stuff, you know, like they, yes. I always look at those teams and think like, wow, this is, this is going to be like a rocking book, you know? Yeah. Yes. Uh, a good editor can really bring out your best work. Are you collecting anything now? Uh, yeah, I don't read a ton, but, uh, I am loving uh, the current Nightwing series at DC. I look forward to every week. Very and, good. <laughs> uh, and the world's finest I'm really loving as well. Those are my two. Uh, and Human Target as well. Uh, those are the three books that I, I eagerly await each, whenever they come out. I think those are three interesting books to pick because they uh, Nightwing and World's Finest are probably the most i want to say lighthearted books coming yeah. out from dc yeah, right now fun. very they're, fun, fun well-written inspirational yes it, it, it's it's yeah they just have a, i just love the tone uh and i can also read them without feeling like i need to know what else is happening in the dc universe uh that you i feel like i can just read those books and and not feel like wait why is this like what's happening in this crossover over here or what like uh, so yeah, that, that's very helpful. And I'm, I'm, I know I read creator own books as well, but this always mm. happens, uh, that I'm now blanking on everything else I'm reading. Um, boy. No, it happens. You know, I think it's always yeah. like those, there's the thing I always find fascinating about the, the really well done big two books is almost like some of that stuff is really in the forefront of your brain you know yes. like as soon as you said nightwing i was like oh man like i love like the run right now yeah is so good and i was i was always a nightwing fan but i never really delved into it until they started doing the um 
the the post future state stuff, you know. Oh, okay, yeah. And it's been awesome. And I think DC's done a really good job of keeping their title separate. Like you were saying, like you don't yeah. need to know a thousand things to get yeah. into like this specific book. Yeah, they they know? make a nod to what else is going on in Nightwing's life in, in right. a Teen Titans book and this and that, but it 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 doesn't feel like you're missing anything. Mm-hmm. I always tell folks. And I also really yeah. like uh, the radiant black stuff in Image. I think yes. Kyle Higgins and his group are doing a, a really fun superhero universe uh, that is. It feels familiar, but also really its own thing, which I think is a is a a, 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 a great accomplishment. That it's something that feels like the superhero stuff you know and love, but is also completely original in its own thing. Uh, and I'm really enjoying watching him kind of build that out. Yeah, and he's got his own universe with yeah. the um, the Rogue book and the Radiant yeah. Red book. You know, I think it's it's. I think reading those books also for me it harkens back to like when, when Invincible first came out, or even like when Savage Dragon first came out, where it's like this is its own universe, and yeah. you're gonna get to see like it, it, it's carte blanche with everything, yeah. you know, yeah. and and it gets really wild. Like that, like that's I agree with you on that. It's a great comic. Are you into? um the convention scene at all or has it been too long for you to like set up a booth and say like hey this is me or is it just of no interest to you yeah it's you know it i haven't i used to do san diego like years and years ago but Mm -hmm. i haven't gone to san diego in over a decade Uh, i'm not a big i don't love the convention scene that much i I hate crowds uh i hate standing in line and and being jostled around Uh uh, not my thing um I am considering there's a convention in San Francisco around Thanksgiving this year, a new like fan expo, I think. And I might do that. I haven't decided yet. I'm, I'm In the next few days, I'm going to decide whether I want to do it. The COVID thing is a whole other factor to consider. It's like, is it worth the risk? I don't know. Uh, but I've got a new graphic novel coming out from Oni in October that I'll be able to you know promote and, and sign copies of and stuff. So I'm considering it. Uh, but I'm not... I'm not. A, I, I'm less and less interested in conventions these days. I guess as I get older, I'm. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to travel somewhere, I'd rather just travel there and sightsee than sit in a convention hall all day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, I think like I'm on the East Coast. I'm in New York, and now it's like we're getting. I understand completely what you're saying too. Like I'm not a fan of big crowds and long lines either. But we're at this weird stage where we have like a. Apparently, it's a severe monkeypox outbreak, oh, as yeah. well as the COVID stuff, and. Yep. You know, I'm going to New York Comic Con, but I'm also just, I feel like I'm just going to wear like an astronaut suit, you yeah, know, yeah. just like completely covered up, you know, and a few buddies of mine went to San Diego this year and luckily they didn't get COVID, but a lot of right. folks that they went with yeah. just came back sick. You yeah. Know? That's, I was literally talking to my wife last night, trying to debate mm-hmm. whether I want to do this and being like, I just don't want to go and end up with COVID and think like, yeah. well, that really wasn't worth the risk. Like just to right. go to the comic book convention, like I haven't gotten it so far. No one in my family has gotten it so far. Like how much do I want to risk that? Exactly. And, and I'm not shaming anyone who goes like it's yeah. all your, you all going to weigh your pluses and minuses and your own risk. Uh, and yeah, I, I, it's a tough one for me. I honestly don't know. Yeah, it's I, I had this conversation with my wife yesterday, actually, and I didn't want to like jinx it where uh, her and I, I think, might be maybe another couple or the only ones that have been free and clear of COVID for the last couple of years, you know, like yeah. we've never gotten sick. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't want it to happen at near Comic Con, you know, like because I feel like that would be just like the ultimate form of right. COVID, <laughs> you yes. know, because like you get like that con crud yeah. is inevitable, regardless, yeah. like pre-COVID, like yeah. I, I would always get sick at the major well, conventions. But you know? I, I do wonder if everybody's masked, if that's going to mitigate the con crud, you know, that, yeah. that, that might be, uh, that might have an impact on it the same way that, you know, that first year of COVID when everybody was masked everywhere, yeah. you weren't getting your seasonal flu or anything either. Right. Uh, so it's like that may help the concrete aspect of it. Yeah, it does help, though. I think like I yeah. is, you know, we are, we're, we're a city of like subways and buses. Right. And <laughs> I'm always I'm I don't care. Like, I don't care what kind of looks I get from people. A mask is on, you know. Oh. Uh, so a couple more questions and then sure. uh, we'll get you out of here. Uh, yeah. What is the sandwich of your dream? Oh man, boy! 
these days I like a good fried chicken sandwich. Yeah. That that's kind of my go to. Yeah. Like a buttermilk chicken, like uh on... yeah. yeah. Little little like tangy mayo, some pickles. Yeah. That sounds awesome. You've inspired me to try to get one this weekend. <laughs> and I'm going to put it, on, put it on my cheat day list of like, you know what? Let's go get a, an awesome chicken yours? sandwich. Oh, you know, there's a there's the sandwich on the top of my head right now. And I haven't had it in like over a year, maybe because it's just too much. Um, there's a place near us in Brooklyn that makes just four sandwiches on their menu. And that's it. Very bare bones. And one of them is like an Italian hero that's like salami, sofrasada, ham, uh, fresh mozzarella, oil, vinegar, shredded uh, lettuce, and tomato. And I, I think about that sandwich often just because of how good it tastes. But also I think about like, I'm going to get sick if I eat it. At this point, <laughs> you know, like I'm just going to get sick. It's not going to agree with me. Like there's, it's too much meat, you know, but yeah, that's, yeah. that's one of those things where I'm like, ah. Oh, so good now you're making me because i lived in brooklyn for a while and every time i go back i love just that bodega hero oh like, yeah doesn't matter where just that classic new york hero yeah that's good where stuff. where in brooklyn did you uh, live i lived in park slope for a while and then i okay. also lived a little further down the f train in a neighborhood i think it's called kensington okay uh yeah this place is in i want to say it's in williamsburg or on the border of williamsburg it's called uh, Federoffs. Okay. Yeah. So, like, if you're ever back in town, I would suggest just getting a giant gro- gross sandwich from them. <laughs> uh, where could everybody find you online? How could people interact with you if you want interaction? Yes. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, just at my name. That's where I'm most active. Awesome, man. And uh, do you have any parting words for everybody before uh, before I let you go? Uh, just um, October 25th, I have a new graphic novel coming out from Oni Press called Area 510. It's uh, uh, a rookie cop is handcuffed to a thief and they're trying to get back to the police station in the midst of an alien invasion. So it's sort of uh, 16 blocks meets Independence Day. Uh, Justin Greenwood drew it. Uh, we created it together uh, and it's a, a lot of fun and, and I hope people will check it out. That sounds awesome. I'm immediately sold. Um, right. If you can shoot me like a PDF of the cover, yeah, yeah, I'll post it after this interview and you know give it a little shout out when the book comes Absolutely. out as well. Cool. Absolutely. All right, Jay. Thank you, man. I'm gonna yeah. hit stop on the recording. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's been fun. Cool. Jay, you're a fantastic guest. Thank you so much. It was fun talking to you. I'd love to have you back again, guys. Check out Copperhead, one of my favorite books. Uh, Sandman, let's talk about that. What a casting. We just finished the first four episodes. I want to make a meal of it. Do yourself a favor and watch it. Oh, don't know if there's going to be a season two, so I don't want to watch it too quick. Tom Sturridge does such a magical job playing a magical character. His voice and his delivery make me want to cry. It's so deliberate, slow-paced. He's a king after all. Uh, but you got to think about it. I remember when I was working at a comic store, Sandman was always a hard sell for people. Sometimes uh, because it's like, hey, man, this book is about a sad dream king that lost his sand, his ruby and his hat. And he talks to a bird. Uh, we've got all sorts of weird reactions when we would pitch the book to people. But uh, Sandman has always been a gateway drug, I think, to great comic books because it's one of the greatest of all time. Right. Uh, if they can do this with Sandman. Imagine what they can do with Invisibles. Don't want to jump the gun, but I think that would be super cool. Uh, My book of the week, Batman 126. Chip Chip Zdarsky has been doing such a effing bang-up job with the book. Go check it out. And also my books that I think you should pick up monthly, Time Before Time, That Texas Blood, Twig, and Nightwing. Yes, Nightwing. Also, guys, uh, I just got to be an affiliate with entertainment earth there are links new links on the youtube page click them if you buy anything you will get a little something to support the show if you want to support the show in other ways there's also a link to my link tree which has everything so if you want to support the show support the show support the show my babies if you want to support the show please click on all the links at the bottom check out the other episodes interact with the creators interact with me if you want to talk comic books please i'm more than welcome to chat comics with anybody uh check it out i'm on twitter at btc rich 
That's BTC Rich. Uh, you can interact with me about comics, please, or pro wrestling. I host another pro wrestling show with Andrew Zarian. Sometimes I show up on Wrestling Observer Live. I also have another film podcast with Alex Kalajanis called Film Class Zeros, where we talk about movies that we love. I'm all over the place. I'm in your face. I'm on the internet. Uh, but please, guys, gently caress that subscribe button, that like button, whatever you got to do, support the show. I want to continue this experiment. I want to get to 100 creator episodes, 100 creator interviews, and 100 plus episodes. Let's make it happen. Love you guys. See you soon. Our next guest is Andy Diggle. Great talk with the guy. Later, guys. Mwah. <laughs>